God works through our beliefs. The law of the Lord is perfect. Divine law is a servant of man. It was given to man not only to create those things which he desires and wishes, but to enable him to overcome all the negative and undesirable conditions in his life. Because God's law is fixed, rigid, and mathematical, it can always be dependent upon. If it is used positively, it will bring only good into man's life. If it is used negatively, it will bring evil. The law is to us what we are to it. It will always respond to us according to our believing thought. Whatever we believe in without doubt, the law is that thing, and will produce it in our experience according to the fixity of our vision and the intensity of our thought. As you believe, so shall you receive. The law, being impersonal, does not know good nor evil. It is so designed that it must make you and your circumstance in the image of your beliefs. If you believe that a draught of fresh air has the power to give you a cold, then any draught of air is a law unto that thing. If you believe that goldenrod has the power to give you hay fever, then for you goldenrod is the law unto hay fever. You will be subject to hay fever every time goldenrod appears, because you are subject to whatever you believe in. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you believe in sickness and health, then you are not only subject to both, but you will manifest both. If you believe in success and failure, you will be subject to both. There will be times when you will succeed and other times when you will fail. If you believe in wealth and poverty, then you will be subject to both. Sometimes you will have one and sometimes you will have the other. If you believe that some men are honest and others are dishonest, then you will attract both into your life. Some will take from you and others will give to you. If you fear thieves, you will attract them to your world. They must come to you by the law of your belief. Job said, The thing I feared came upon me. He believed it would come upon him, and it did. Fear is faith in evil. It is a negative belief. What we believe in, we demonstrate on all occasions. By the law of belief, we have attracted to ourselves all that we have, and by the same law, we have separated ourselves from those things which we do not have. The world is made up of two classes of people, those who have everything they need because they are positive to them, and those who, because they entertain negative states of mind, deprive themselves of the good things of life. In the first case, we have healthy, happy, prosperous, and successful people. In the second case, we have miserable, diseased, and unsuccessful people. Positive people meet the problems of life squarely and courageously. Negative people meet them with fear and doubt. The law is infallible, and we should not be disappointed if it works the way we expect it to. The law has no choice but to obey its own terms. God's work is finished. He is the law. He is a supply. Our work is to obey the law, to receive and distribute the supply. If we have been going in the wrong direction for a long time, we must now turn around and go in the right direction. It may take a little while for us to get turned around, but turn we must. When Jesus said, Turn the other cheek, give your cloak with your coat, and go the second mile, he meant that we were to go all the way with the law. How do we do that? By taking absolute control of the mind and by replacing every negative state with a positive state. It would also involve the formation of new habits of thinking, by giving our thoughts and by refusing to give power to adverse and negative conditions, and by refusing to allow ourselves to be the victim of our circumstance. As we cease to give power to the negative by refusing to think about or entertain them, we are calling forth the higher use of the law for the fulfillment of our desires. As our minds become more and more positive to the truth, our material and other conditions will become more and more satisfactory. To obey the law and use it positively and constructively continues to be the rule for all successful achievement. God works through substitutions. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. The best way to get rid of the evil in our lives is by refusing to entertain it. The best way to destroy the conscience of poverty is to cultivate the conscience of wealth. The best way to destroy the conscience of sickness is to cultivate the conscience of health. The wise gardener works to make his crop so abundant that it will overshadow the weeds. If we spent all of our time in trying to get rid of negatives in our lives and nothing more, we would finally succeed in producing a state of consciousness, 
devoid of goodness as well as evil, and it would be good for nothing. St. Paul said, overcome evil with good. We must substitute. We must choose the truth and stick to it. When the positive idea is introduced, the negative idea dies away. Except ye be converted, ye shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. What is conversion? It is merely a change of allegiance from the negative side of life to the positive side. It is both a change of mind and a change of self. It is not acquiring new things, but a shift in mind, so that you can use the things which you already have. When you are converted, you simply align yourself with the positive elements in life and make them supreme. Man must take the initiative. He must not only put himself and his mind on the positive side, but he must make it the winning side, the dominant side. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Since we have proved to ourselves that we cannot work successfully in the human mind, we must let it die by refusing to use it to think with. Jesus said, Call no man on earth your father. What did he mean? He meant that we must adopt a new father, or a higher state of mind, and inherit goodness instead of evil. Jesus' method was to cultivate the good instead of restricting evil. Do instead of do not. He set people to doing right instead of escaping wrong. The human consciousness will die as we cultivate the Christ consciousness. Your business and my business of spiritual work is to mentally get back all of the deformities and imperfections which appear, and by our positive attitude toward the truth, transmute them all into terms of perfection. We do this in the same way that the moving picture operator changes the picture on the screen. He does not deal directly with the picture itself or the light, but changes the film. When the film is changed, the picture changes automatically. Man's screen is his world and his life. It is his body, his home, his friends, his associates, his business, and his environment. His projector is his consciousness, which of course is always responsible for his outer circumstances. By his consciousness, he is attracted to himself all that he has or is. Now let us suppose that the pictures on a man's screen are not to his liking. What must he do? Can he change the pictures by working with conditions, stewing, fretting, worrying, and fearing? No, because that would only create more ugliness and imperfection in his world. There is only one thing he can do, and that is to go within his projector or consciousness and change the film or image of his thought. If he has been experiencing negative conditions in his environment, then he must replace them with the positive images which the negative represents. He must select the picture which he wants, first in the form of a mental image, and then he must hold it and use it until it expresses itself in material conditions. The thing that most people do not seem to understand is that the picture is never on the screen, but always in the mind or projector. It can only be changed by inserting a different film. There is only one light which shines through every projector, but that light is never responsible for the pictures we show. The light is always pure, whether the picture we project be good or bad. This is the true light which lighteth every man that comes into the world. The light is never to blame. Being impersonal, it will project a good picture or a bad one. What appears on the screen only changes its appearance. The film, by and of itself, does not and cannot change the light. The light is God and will project any picture which man holds before it. Thus, when man substitutes positive film or states of mind for negative ones, he will get different pictures and different appearances. What the world commonly calls a healing will take place. Jesus said, Let your light so shine that men may see your good works. And again, I am the light of the world. Right in the midst of your most trying hour, your deepest sorrow, your most grievous illness, your greatest anxiety, and your most terrifying fear, God's light is shining, searching out all the dark places in your life. He is in the midst of your greatest failure, offering you success. He is in the midst of your most vexing problem, offering you a solution. He is in the midst of your depleted bank account, offering you supply. Well, that is paradoxical, you say, for how can a God who is love and who perceives only good in his creation allow such limitations, deformity, and defect to appear? He allows them only in the sense that he has given you free choice and volition to think and act as you please. He has given you the power to see what you wish to see and to believe what you wish to believe. If, therefore, you put his pure light through negative human films, you will bring out imperfect pictures or results. 
If you pervert his light and power, you'll get perverse and distorted conditions. Is it God's fault when you get imperfect pictures? Do your pictures change God or his creation? No, not at all. I, God, change not. How then are human needs to be met? By transforming our negative states of mind into positive ones. It makes no difference what we may think to the contrary. There is one thing certain and patent to all those who have their eyes to see, and that is that a negative state of mind simply cannot produce positive and successful results. It is wise, therefore, if one wants desirable results, to transform every negative state into a positive one. How is that to be done? By being so conscious of God's presence and so positive to the good that we are unconscious of anything in our lives that is unlike God. Instead of human limitations and imperfections, we see the divine possibilities in everything and everybody. Instead of sickness, we see God's wholeness and rely absolutely upon His power to bring it forth. Instead of criticism, we see God's love and divine completion. In His consciousness, the other fellow becomes our other self. Instead of ignorance, we see divine wisdom, knowledge, and power. Instead of scarcity and poverty, we see God's infinite and eternal wealth. Instead of frustration, futility, and failure, we contemplate God's boundless and unlimited resource. Instead of fear, we practice confidence. Instead of weakness, vacillation, and indecision, we contemplate God's steadfastness, security, and strength. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything but a new creature. The new creature is none other than our ability to look beyond appearances until we can see ourselves as we truly are.